Hey, neighbor. I want to win that Husqvarna 240. And watch it get redeemed. Welcome to the Shed Shop, neighbors. This is the part two assembly of the Husqvarna 240 chainsaw giveaway. And so obviously we've got to go through the instructions again. I got asked today by a couple of neighbors, hey, <laughs> we're confused. How do we enter to win a chainsaw? And I said, it's very simple. Every single video I do on the Husqvarna 240 chainsaw giveaway will have a link to the very first video uh, called I Did You Dirty Husqvarna Chainsaw Giveaway Confessions at the Parts Washer. That is on the I'm Giving Shit Away playlist, the Confessions at the Parts Washer playlist. And that video link will be the pinned comment on every video I do from here until the end of the Husqvarna 240 Chainsaw Giveaway, except the giveaway video itself. Because by then, it's going to be too late to enter because we'll be drawing the winner. Uh, and it will also be in the description. So the pinned comment and the description will have the video link to the very first video that you must do the three steps in to start the process. Okay, And then after that, you can watch the instructions video. Um... Uh, and that will tell you how to gain additional entries. And that video is already posted and also has the link to the very first video. Now, here's a beautiful concept for you guys. You're in the future right now as you watch this. And I'm in the future watching this shit that is in the past with you. So I'm in the past and in the future. But you're only in the future. You see... Isn't that some shit? And also, in the past, but coming in the future, as I speak, I have recorded the part one of the assembly, even though you don't have it on the internet right now as I record this, but will in the future. And it's from the past, but it will be the future. Aren't you guys tracking with me? Isn't that shit incredible? It's like when you talk to an Amazon representative or an eBay representative, in the Philippines or India. They're in the future. And you're in a past for them. You're talking to somebody that is tomorrow. They're in tomorrow. A lot of the times when I talk to them. Fascinating, right? Anyways, moving on, neighbors. This is going to be part two of the disassembly. And even though you haven't seen it yet, but oh, you have. Because by the time you see this video, I will hope you have seen part one. And liked and commented on the video so you can gain another entry. Just like you should like and comment on this video so you can gain an additional entry. But that's only if you have clicked on the link in the description down below. And the pinned comment for the video. I did you dirty. Husqvarna Chainsaw Giveaway. Confessions at the Parts Washer. On the playlist. I'm giving shit away. And also on the playlist. Confessions at the Parts Washer. Also on the playlist. Chainsaw Giveaways. Okay, and in this video, you guys hopefully know by now, but don't know as I record this video because part one is not posted. So again, this is the future past, past, future present, future past. None of that makes sense, does it? Well, I discovered our heart might be filthy, vile, dirty, tainted, and disgusting. But since this is a giveaway and I'm crazy, and I'm trying to say sober, damn it. And I'm questioning if King Jesus exists. All while I praise and adore him. Be angry with him. Curse him. Say God damn it. On the internet. <laughs> Y'all got to listen to me. Tell a story real quick. So I'm going to put this shit down. I'm going to tell you a story. And then we'll get to work. And you get to see. Even though you may have already seen it. In the future which is the past, the past future, the future past. The problem in video one that I discovered with this 240 that you can win. We're still going to redeem it. Even with this problem, it just might take longer. So I'm going to put this shit down. Stay tuned to find out what the hell I discovered. If you haven't already seen it, as I record this, I know what's wrong. 
you don't know what's wrong. Because the other video, though uploaded to YouTube, is not public yet. So, what's the story I want to tell you? First off, it's going to include neighbor Kyle. So sorry, neighbor Kyle, but I'm not sorry. Second off, it's going to include the Chainsaw Redeemer, damn it. Third off, it's going to include my uncle. Um, Here's what happened, neighbors. I blew up on my uncle today. Uh, and it has happened in the past because he's a bad neighbor. He does me really dirty. He's really lazy. But on the other side of that, there is my understanding that life is shit. We live in the shit soup of life made from poop that comes out in a butthole. And unfortunately, sometimes, even though I'm able to understand that my uncle is just another human being, I also don't understand how somebody like neighbor Kyle, who is not my family, who barely knows me, who had to have his saw sit here another week. It's back now. Okay. And again, as I record this one, you guys don't have the footage on a YouTube as I record this. But in the future, when this is posted, you'll have that shit that's from the past in the future for you. Okay. But anyways, neighbor Kyle had his saw here on warranty, took it home and it didn't work right the first time. Brought it back. Couldn't get it tuned in. We got it running right. He helped me with some chores. We cut with his saw. He took it home. Wasn't running right again. I bring it back. It's running fine. He tells me, you ain't got no real wood in it. I said, you're right. Uh, I go cut. Or I go try to tune it with my tachometer. My cheap tachometer. I bought a new one now. Uh, and and as soon as I try and get it tuned in, it's just acting up. It's running like it's super, 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 super rich. Um, But the tachometer's telling me it's not. Because of my chitty character, I didn't trust my ear. I trusted my tachometer. Okay? So, basically, <laughs> the other day, I decided, after I got my new tachometer in the mail, $70, uh, thank you, neighbor Brian, at Steel, for showing me what tachometer you use, because now I have the same one. Thank you, neighbor. I ordered it on Amazon. Uh, I did know that even though I felt the saw was acting very rich, I was right. Okay, so I also did discover before the tachometer came that there was an air leak. We replaced the intake boot. We replaced the... The, damn it, I'm getting off track. This shit doesn't matter what we've done to neighbor Kyle's saw. I'm trying to tell you about neighbor Kyle, damn it. Uh, nonetheless, he's got his damn saw back. It's working right. We cut a couple of big ass trees down with it, but there's going to be no damn cut video for you, except you looking at trees for 15 seconds while neighbor Kyle's on the other damn side cutting trees with his saw. Because he, even though doesn't believe in Jesus, somehow is enacting biblical principles such as when you give, do not let your left hand Know what your right hand is doing. So this, hide it. Don't tell it that you're giving your neighbor free service to help him with his chores. While your fucking chainsaw that you overpaid for is in his shop under warranty. The boob tube world doesn't need to know who neighbor Kyle is. I think is basically his concept. Now I could go on and say, well, maybe it's because he's embarrassed to say he knows me. But, I don't know. I think it's irrelevant. The point being, neighbor Kyle plays in to the argument that me and my uncle had. Because I don't understand how somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus, who works a full-time job, uh, a job on days that can be very, very, very physically demanding, um, in high heat temperatures, and has a wife and child, but yet is still willing, if I call, even though it's only a short-term relationship right now, if I call him, will come help me. Free. Whilst he spends money and donates money to the shed shop. To me, at least, that's what my Bible says my church neighbors are supposed to do. He doesn't believe in Jesus. He's agnostic, basically. He says, if I had to classify myself, it would be agnostic. I don't believe we're stardust. I don't believe in evolution, necessarily. I believe there's a creator. 
I just don't know that it's Jesus, and I don't believe that it's Jesus. And his reasons why are the same reasons I struggle with my fucking faith. But then I got my church neighbor uncle who will not help me with chores and is excessively lazy. And today, essentially, uh, I'll let him have it again because I've asked him for months and months and months and months and months to not make me ask him to help me with our chores like cutting grass and weed eating, fixing our house, uh, cleaning our house, and everything else that we have to do uh, as roommates. And essentially, it's a very long story as to how I ended up living uh, together with my uncle uh, on our on our property here that he does not want to be here. Um, but I don't want to go into that right now. Essentially, my uncle left and I went through this huge battle uh, about whether I should call neighbor Kyle or not. And essentially, my uncle comes home, and, and here's what I think, neighbors. I, I think that although oftentimes people tell me I'm wrong openly, I think more often than not, over the years, what I've seen is my understanding of people and their psyches seems to be more on point than even what I believe it is, because I question and doubt. That I understand because people tell me something different than what I think I see. But there are times I'm wrong as well. But with my uncle, basically, essentially, it, it is it is very interesting that uh, I finally get him to let it out that he is angry with King Jesus. He's fucking pissed off. He doesn't feel like King Jesus listens to him guides him, directs him, or talks to him. And also, he's afraid of him. And so he's afraid to say he's mad at the king of the universe. And I says to him, neighbor, the Bible says, if you believe in that shit, that King Jesus knows your every fucking thought before you ever have it. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Hey, this is the disassembly. Fast forward to the fucking chainsaw if you don't like this shit. Just fast forward until you see the chainsaw on my bench. I'll try to put a timestamp in the description, but no damn promises. I'm messy, and it's the middle of the fucking night. And I've got inventory. I've got the list on the internet so I can make some damn money. Because I got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of inventory. That because my internet is shitty and my uncle's shitty is not listed. Anyways... Uh, my uncle finally admits this, that he's upset with King Jesus. He's mad at him. He's angry. Uh, and I think he finally also admitted some other things that you say, I know this is the wrong character or blah, 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 blah. But the reality is sometimes we don't give a shit that it's wrong. We just want to say, I like being lazy and watching fucking TV all day. Most people cannot admit that's just what they want to do. That they don't give a shit about you. I told my uncle, pick me or your TV. If you love me more than the TV, let me smash it right now. And he said, I can't, but I do love you more. You're not breaking my shit. I said, fine. If you love me more than the TV, let's sell it right now. And put it toward your truck tires that you need. But don't have because you're giving your money away and spending it at the Shell gas station on shitty food. And he said, no! <laughs> I said, then just fucking admit! You don't love me more than your TV. And that'll be okay. I'm going to tell you it's shitty, even if you don't believe in Jesus, that you love a fucking material more than me. But... I'll also tell you, at the same damn time, I got to hit my vape pen, damn it. At the same damn time, I still fucking love you. Just know that I'm the type of person that's not going to hide that shit. I'm going to tell you every day how I fucking feel that you're doing me dirty. Because you say you believe in Jesus. And so, you should be helping me take care of our property. I don't like this. 
it's strawberry, it's a disposable, it's nasty. But they were out of the juice that's no nicotine. So I had to buy a disposable. Because I don't want to smoke nicotine because I quit smoking cigarettes. Anyways. I think my uncle finally came to a realization that he has to decide whether he wants to continue dying of diabetes while he sits around and does nothing at work all night long and then comes home and does nothing at home all day long and then on his three days off does nothing all day long and all night long except watch TV and play games and once in a great while do a chore. Um, I think my point in all of this, neighbors, is this. If people cannot accept you in a shitty state of life that you're in, fine, fuck them. But you don't have to lie. Why would you want them to? Why do you want to pretend? No, I love you more than the TV. But I choose the TV over you 99% of the time. No, I love you more than my job. But if my boss calls me, I'll drop whatever the fuck we're doing to go to work anytime. Why don't we just say, no, honey, damn it. I don't think I love you more than my job. Or maybe I'm scared to tell my boss no. Let's just be honest. Let's be honest about who we are and how we feel. If you're mad at Jesus, whether you believe in him or not, if you believe in a creator, but you're fucking pissed off at the creator, just fucking say so. Just say one day, okay, fuck it. You can say it just like this, neighbors. I'm not saying it's not a sin. But if you don't believe in Jesus, it's not a sin. Because you don't believe in sin. And if you believe in right and wrong, but you don't believe in fucking King Jesus, well, I got something to say to that. Where the fuck did you get right and wrong from? Not fucking stardust and single-celled organisms. Come on now. Listen, I'm not here to thump you with the fucking Bible. I don't know what the fuck I believe. I'll just keep telling you that logical denomination to me tells me I'm not stardust. And if I had to say what seems most right in my heart, it seems King Jesus. Even though a lot of days, I'll tell you, it's hard to fucking believe in him. And I don't know that he's real. That's why I'm different, neighbors. I'm the only one on the internet doing this shit. You ain't gonna find nobody else being crazy for you. Being open and honest. Just fucking direct, clear, raw, and real. Sharing your life with them. I'm the only one doing it. That's why he should be here, damn it. Because I'm fucking entertaining even though half the time I'm boring. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, so. Here's the deal. Just be honest, damn it. And if you're shitty, just say I'm shitty and I'm okay being shitty. I don't want to change. Don't try and pretend you're not shitty. And if you believe in King Jesus, especially, just say, fuck it, I'm shitty. I want to keep sinning. Even though Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I want to accept that, hey, King Jesus, you said, ye who breaks the least of these commandments and tells or causes others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I'm okay being called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I don't have to be called the greatest like the ones that keep the commandments. Oh, but nobody can be sinless. <laughs> you guys got to stick around and watch my goddamn it. Come on, church playlist. Understand what I mean by perfection and sinless and all that shit. Because we ain't got time for that shit. Why? Because we're giving away a chainsaw and we're about to take the fucking top end off. We didn't even vacuum pressure test this saw. We said, fuck it. We're just taking it apart. And we did. And so with that, I'm going to turn you down to the damn bench and we're going to tear the last little bit of the saw apart. We just want to expose the heart. And so maybe 15 more minutes, neighbors, and then I'll tell you uh, at the end of the video what's next. Okay, so let's get to work. Damn it. I'm going to turn you down to the bench. Okay, here's your Husqvarna 240 chainsaw giveaway, neighbors. Here's where we left off in video one, which as of right now, in the present past, uh, for you, as you watch this, which is now the future for me, but will be the present <laughs> when I watch it with you. I told you in video one that I wasn't going to vacuum pressure test this saw until we put it back together and I would decide whether I was going to remove the top end uh, when we got it apart. Look, neighbors, you see that chip? I can't tell quite 
if there's nail catchers, I took my pick and I very lightly crossed my piston. But it feels to me like we do have scoring. Now, mind you, this is a damn running saw. Okay, so essentially, because of that purpose, I need to go ahead and remove the top end. We're going to start. We're going to finish taking the saw apart. We're going to go ahead and take our recoil off. Four T25 screws or flatheads, whichever you want. So you can use your scrunch if you really want to. Okay. We will go ahead and get the recoil off. Uh, we've got to take the clutch off, which I don't think we don't need to take the flywheel and clutch to do our top end. Really, the main thing I want to get to tonight is the top end. So I can let you guys know if we have to wait for parts for this saw. Um, I'm sorry. Parts for this saw. Um, that would include a top end or a piston because the thing is, I, 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 I cannot... I cannot in good conscience buy from my competitors if I need Meteor products for, for the chainsaw repairs on this saw. Okay. It appears I've never taken the top end off of a 240. It appears we need to go underneath, which looks like an, an 8 mil. It might be a 10 mil, damn it. No, it's an 8 mil. 8 mil bolts. There's four 8 mil bolts underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and use the impact because they're probably tight. Okay, we'll take these off. I don't know what kind of gaskets this has on my base here. And I know I don't have crankshaft gaskets for this. And it is a plastic case, but I don't know. Also, sometimes I have seen plastic cases in which the crankshaft seals are part of the crank case. Uh, I've not seen it very often, but I have seen it. Okay, now that we've got that off, let's see. Um... I will be able to remove my clutch and flywheel. I have a tool that I can use called a piston block that I can put on and my piston will sit on top of this so that it will hold my motor so that I can remove this stuff. I already said in video one, I think I need to replace the sprocket. It does look like it. I do believe I have one for this all, but I do not know. So now that that's removed, we should be able to break the seal and pull our top end. It looks like it looks like it looks like it will come just fine. I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way for now. Okay. Whoa, what's that? Where did you come from? Uh, Chit neighbors, I don't know what this is. Oh, wow. That is weird. What in the hell? I've never seen such chit in my life. That sits on top of these crankshafts on the bearings. The bearings are the crankshaft seals. This saw is weird, neighbors. I've, I've never been inside a 240. I have to see what the hell. That That is a perplexity to me. Perplexity. Okay, I've never seen these before. If anybody has seen these inside of a cylinder, please tell me why they would be removable. That has to be removable. I'm looking. These are soft bearing seals. Um, it is weird. There's like a rubber seal around the bearing. I genuinely, you guys, I've not seen this before. Okay, I'm looking at our cylinder. I don't see any, any foreseen issues on our cylinder. I do see a little bit of marking, but it's, it, it's just ever so minimal. Um, these transfer covers things are perplexing to me. I'm sorry. I'm distracted by that neighbors. I, I've not seen that. Okay. But we, we are getting in here because of this. Here we go. This is what I was worried about. And yes, I had good cause for concern. Uh, I think we will have to re-ring this and potentially re-piston it. The top end looks okay, but I think we will need a piston. I can potentially repair this, but I, I, at minimum, I think I need a ring. I don't think I have a 38 mil ring for this. Not this size. I don't feel any marks on the pit or on the ring. See, this is where I've got to give it an ultrasonic bath, neighbors, and really inspect it. This thing has started to score, though. But it almost appears that it was just carbon deposits that caused that. 
And a lot of times when that's the case, you can just clean it up, uh, wet sand it with like some 600 grit. But I usually have to replace the ring. And so I'm just trying to examine our motor some more. I do see transfer, I think, way up there. No, I can't feel it though. Way, it's way up there. I have to do this without gloves. All that's going to have to be clean. So for now, neighbors, I, I can say I don't know if we can reuse all of your stuff. I think the top end will be fine. Uh, I also really am inclined to say I almost feel like the piston will be fine. But I can't, I can't determine with the gloves on. I genuinely can't. It doesn't appear to catch. Except up here with the carbon deposit. And you can see, let's see what you guys can see. Oh, you can't see chit. Damn it. Okay, let's see. I should have taken a damn the break off. Okay, let's see here. Hold on, neighbors. Let me get you a better view here. Get you a better view of your chainsaw. Whoever's the winner watching this. Okay. Whoops, damn, you weren't supposed to do that. Okay, that spring usually comes right out if the handle comes out. I'm going to leave it for now. No, oh, because I know what will happen. It will pop out and I will lose it. Okay, there we go. There's that. There's that. All right, here's what I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in for this one, okay? All right, here's what we're looking at, neighbors. If you look right here, what you will see is the silver, right? But everywhere around that is is black, tarnish. It's carbon deposit on this side, on this side. And then you'll also see around that silver, you got silver here and silver up here. But in between this line right here is carbon. And then you see black right here. Right, and then it disappears, and you just see like a little scuffing here, okay? Just a little bit of scuffing. But when we drag our pick very lightly, it doesn't catch any of these marks. Even that one that looks like it might be bad, it doesn't catch it, okay? I can't feel the nail, but that's why I'll clean this in an ultrasonic bath. I'll remove all of this carbon, uh, everything that we can, and then I'll check it. And also, again, if you're watching this video, I need to know about these damn transfer covers because this will be posted while we're waiting on parts for this saw, okay? I want to know. I feel like this saw with big old open ports like that would probably scream, okay? I've never seen a saw with removable covers inside the cylinder like that. That is why when that fell out, I was so confused. Um... But the thing is, that's closed by the bearing, it seems. And so that essentially would eliminate the whole bearing seal. It's a rubber seal that sits over all of this right here. Both of these are rubber around the bearing. Okay, that's rubber. And that would sit in this entire groove right here. And that only leaves this little spot right here for air to go inside your transfer and to transfer up to the top end. Uh, very perplexing concept to me. I'm looking at it. It's uh, interesting to say the least. So, yeah, I got to find out. Can I remove these? I think I can. I feel like the concept looks right to me that I can. So, nonetheless, then back to this. What I think is all this carbon missing right here, neighbors. That's what you see right here. That's what caused the start of this. But that is why I like to go through saws all the way because this eventually leads to destruction if we don't clean all this property. Okay, this is bad. I looked up in the cylinder. This is a very long stroke. And so it's extremely difficult for me to get down in here all the way at, at the end here. Uh, you guys can't see. Let me get the lot. Maybe you can see. Okay, let's see here. We're going to look up at the top here, all the way inside, okay? Is where I'm going to sign a lot, right here, okay? 
see down there, you can see the lines, but further down after that opening, that transfer, is what appears to be some transfer, but I really think it's just carbon transfer. And so, if it is, the ultrasonic bath should take it off. Uh, and if it doesn't, 600 grit should take it off. And if that doesn't, then we've got transfer that we can remove. But other than that, it's such a mild amount. I will reuse the cylinder. I think I will reuse the piston. Remember the saw was running and I did kind of get it to tune in. I would like to replace your ring though. Uh, even if it means... Well, I have a meteor order coming in June. It's the middle of May now. It's May 15th today, I think. Yeah, I, I want to replace the ring. I don't want... I, I know it's a giveaway, and I know you guys are excited, and you want the saw, but I want you to get a proper saw. And so that means I should probably replace that ring. I don't like it, okay? So I think that's what we'll do. Now, the only other thing I've got to figure out, I do see black, uh, like RTV silicone, on top of these gaskets here, these bearing gaskets or whatever they are. Uh, this is a different setup than what I'm used to. I work on a lot of steels. I've never opened up one of these models before. And so again, I'm I'm now I'm wondering, are there other Husqvarna models that I've not taken top ends off of that have rubber rings? Uh, ha have the crankshaft seals around the bearing like this? I do not know. But nonetheless, neighbors, this is going to be the second video of the, the Husqvarna chainsaw giveaway. Oh, check this out. Let me show you a little trick. These, these piston stops are not necessarily meant for these plastic crankcases, but they do work. Okay, you can get your piston to stop in a safe way. And then here's an idea for you guys to help you take off this clutch. If you don't have a specialty tool, what you can do, get you two crescent wrenches. Let me zoom you out, damn it. Get you two crescent wrenches, okay? And then, essentially, I don't love the ones with the spring in the way, but you take your crescent wrench and you set it down in here like so, okay? And then you take your other one and we turn it, okay? And on this one, I don't think it will work. It's hard for me to get a grip sometimes. Okay, let's try. Turn it this way. There we go. That's all you gotta do, neighbors. See how that loosened that? Okay, that's our clutch because we have to take it off anyways. So might as well just do all of this stuff right now and get it out of the way. Okay. You will oftentimes get bearings that stick like this on your sprockets. You just gotta work it, okay? It will come off. Oh, actually, it's not as bad as I thought, but I still would like to maybe replace it if I have one or I can get one uh, affordable. I think I might have one. I don't know. I got to look. I think I might, but I don't know. Okay. That's that. And then we should have back here our oil pump and our worm gear and everything should be behind this cover here. Okay. And we will leave that for now. Uh, well, hell. Yeah, it's T20s. Alright, and then our flywheel. We just uh, need our half inch. Okay. And on this one, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to unscrew the nut until it's just above the crankshaft. I'll grab a pair of uh, pliers, needle nose pliers. I like my curved ones. I'll grab me a nice heavy hammer. Okay. This is because I don't have every single hundreds of flywheel pullers there are. Uh, boy, I forgot about the springs on this one. Let me grab a smaller hammer. This is not a steel. 
It doesn't have plastic paws inside the recoil. This one has the paws right on the recoil. I forget sometimes, neighbors. Things are a little bit different, okay? I will lift it up. I will very carefully, hopefully, hit my, just my bolt. It does not want to come. It's not coming. Boy, that flywheel's on there, okay? Well, let's see, neighbors. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There it goes. It's not so easy with that light hammer, and I did hit my spring once, but it's okay. They're metal and they're strong. So I wasn't super, if they were plastic, I would have been more worried about doing that, but not so bad. All right, and then we've got, whoops. For now, this is easier for me than bagging it on the video. So I'll do this and bag it later. Ah, maybe. Okay. I'm assuming, yeah, we're going to have to remove our oil pump and stuff to get the crank all the way out. These seals uh, are interesting. They, they really are. I've just never quite seen any like this. And the way they're indented is quite heavily. And I'm wondering why. Those are for the transfers right there. That's the inside right here. And then the ridges are sitting over these transfers. I just, why would they make them removable, you know? Maybe instead of putting transfer covers on, they did that. It just seems to me, I've never seen a piston go up plastic before. Uh, I don't know. I have to do some research. This one confuses me. It really does. I, I do have a theory. We, we can take those out and this saw will run like a beast. I do not know. A 38cc saw with, with uh, yeah, close transfers like that. I do not know. We will see. The spark plug looks good. Saw looks like it's been running in pretty decent condition if the spark plug is not new. Um, I need to get a 220 out. Messy. Damn, I can't see nothing now. I thought these plates, damn it, uh, just came right off. I thought I thought they slid right off oh it's got the clips okay the little clips here against the brackets or against the studs okay so we'll open those up this one won't be so easy Damn it, lost my pick. Get out of here, bugs. They've come to seek, kill, and destroy me, neighbors. Damn it. The shed shop is being overtaken by the bugs. Okay, and then our oil pump should come out now, damn it. Let's see here. There we go. Get that chit out. There we go. Okay. I don't know if this has oil in it. I've got to check. Damn it. I do not know this saw, so I'm going to put these screws back in for now. I don't think they'll prevent us from cleaning. The saw is actually not horribly dirty. It's just dirty. It's not a saw that was redeemed. They said it's almost ready. They must admit it's almost ready for being a used saw. That has a scored piston. And cylinder transfer, potentially. Alright, now this should come right out. There we go. There it is, neighbors. This is a really interesting setup. Yeah, that bearing's loose on there. The I don't know that the bearing should be loose on the crankshaft. 
They seem good, though. That's the weird thing. Okay, I will have to do research. I'm not used to bearings being movable on the crankshaft itself. Uh, they're usually pressed on. But there and again, I mean, it's got a rubber around it. So I'm also not used to that. So what we will do, neighbors, is research. This, I think, if we get a ring, we're fine. Let me do the glove test. Or no glove. Let me do the fingernail catch. Oh, yeah. I can clean this up. I can clean this up if I can get a ring for it. Yeah, there's no no uh, nail catchers. Okay, I feel the carbon. I don't feel nail catchers. I do think we will have to do something about the top of our cylinder here. However, I just can't. I can't. I can feel just a little bit of it. And I can't feel anything that's catching. But like I said, we'll give it ultrasonic path and go from there. Okay, so... Essentially, now what we need to do, neighbors, is we just need to take our chip, get some bags, and bag the chip. And then you can stick around real quick, and I'll tell you what's next, damn it. That's what we're going to do, okay? Bag the chip right there. Bag the chip right here. And we'll mark on the chip what it is. Okay. Mark chain break. Damn it. Chain break handle. Told my uncle tonight. So I got to believe that even if I'm vexed by an evil spirit, that King Jesus is in control if he's real. And I gave him my heart. So if I'm vexed by an evil spirit, fucking so be it. It's by his order. And I will do what he says on the internet. Even if it means go crazy. And say crazy chit. And give chit away. That's right, neighbors. I'm giving chit away. This chainsaw can be yours. Even though it's got little bits of problems. And even though I don't know if we got to replace your bearings or not. I'm not used to bearings moving on a crankshaft like that. So we'll find out. Maybe this saw is going to cost me a lot more money than I anticipated. But that's okay if it does, neighbors. I'm still going to give the chit away and redeem it no matter what it costs. Just know if I needed a new top end, I was not buying one from a competitor, nor was I going to buy OEM. You would be waiting for the saw for like three months. And so however long it takes to get the parts that I do need to get them at the price I need. So sorry, neighbors. But if you want the saw, you will have to wait, okay? That's the only solution I can offer. Okay, neighbor? That's it. Had to flip my glove back out. Damn it. Don't want to put my hand in a dirty, greasy glove. Chip. Okay. There's that. Let me get my recoil bolts. And then we'll wrap the chit up. And I'll tell you what's next. Honest. You might not like it though, damn it. Um, our oil pump, I guess I can go ahead and unhook it. I just don't know if this thing has oil in it. We'll find out. Okay, there's that. It's the cylinder, the head, the jug. All right, and then what I like to do, oh no, I did myself dirty. I don't have any more bubble wrap envelopes out here. Damn it. Okay, so, in a case where I don't have a bubble wrap envelope, what I like to do is even when it's... Hey, neighbor. I want to win that Husqvarna 240 and watch my videos cut off because your phone died. So sorry, neighbors. Welcome to the shed shop. I guess, once again, I will have to learn or at least try to get good merging software because part two of the Husqvarna chainsaw giveaway 
uh, the phone has died right at the end of the video, right when I was about to give my conclusion. And so unless I can figure out how to merge videos, uh, I've tried it in the past and it fails. They, they come out really weird and, and cut up and just not good. And so maybe that's an internet issue. I don't know. But but in reality, it just doesn't work. But I will try it once more. And essentially, we had left off. I was saying what I like to do. And then I don't remember what I was going to tell you that I like to do. But I was bagging parts. And so it wasn't that important. But in closing on that video, what I will say is essentially... You have to remember, click the link in the description and the first pinned comment of any video on the Husqvarna 240 chainsaw giveaway besides the first video, obviously. And that will bring you to the very first video called I Did You Dirty Husqvarna Chainsaw Giveaway Confessions at the Ports Washer. Okay, uh... Damn it, I better verify the name of the damn video. I think that's what it's called. I know it starts, I did you dirty, Husqvarna Chainsaw Giveaway. I'm so sorry, neighbors. I'm tired, and I just had like a four-hour talk with my uncle. And we have those, unfortunately, like once a week. Um, And so it is what it is. But you will have to follow the three steps in that video. It seems some people are confused. So I'm trying to clarify. Every video that the Husqvarna 240 chainsaw is in will have at least the disassembly uh, and reinstall, reassembly, everything else, will have a link in the description and it will be the pinned comment to the first video. It starts, I did you dirty, Husqvarna chainsaw giveaway. It is on the playlist titled, I'm giving shit away. It is on the playlist titled Confessions at the Parts Washer. And the link, again, is in the description and the comments down below. It's the pinned comment, the very first comment. Click the link. Also, in the description down below, you will find a link to the other videos for the Husqvarna 240 Chainsaw. Because with each video, Click the second link in the description down below and you will see an instruction video that explains to you in each video you can like and comment to gain an additional entry. That's only the Husqvarna 2... That's only the Husqvarna 240 Chainsaw Giveaway videos. It starts with I Did You Dirty Husqvarna Chainsaw Giveaway and then I put out a short and then I put out the first, uh, I'm sorry, and then I put out the instructions video. And then I put out another short. And then I will put out, as I record this, it's not out yet, but it's uploaded to the boob tube, just not public. Uh, the teardown part one, the disassembly part one. And then you will have either the disassembly, or, or I'm sorry, and then you will have the disassembly part two and then that will either include this merged into it or this will be the disassembly part three for the Husqvarna 240 chainsaw giveaway okay and essentially what I have to do now is that had some transfer covers inside of the cylinder plastic that I've not seen before I would guess uh the piston ring the metal damn it the metal piston ring rubbing against that plastic those might need replaced what am i talking about well hopefully this is part of the first video or the damn it the second disassembly video uh these things they slide inside the transfer cover here or the transfer port and essentially only allow for air to go up in there okay but i'm wondering like an o25 or an ms210 or an uh yeah an ms210 uh, uh, older 017s, 018s, they have open transfer ports like that, and they seem more powerful than the split transfers, uh, which is just a, a channel or an extra ridge down the center of this big open port, essentially. 
So I have to do research, but my other concern also is I would think that plastic inside that motor would wear <laughs> very quickly uh, with a metal piston ring against it. And so, I mean, they're not airtight. That's the thing. They're definitely not airtight. I don't know why they're in there. Um, I'm not a porter. And so, I don't know the science behind it. But to me, it seems like air could get past these little plastic pieces anyways. I'll do some research. If you know, maybe I haven't put the chainsaw together and maybe I haven't gotten to research by the time you watch this damn video because I'm going to have to order parts and do research and everything else. And so hopefully I'll have this video to you before I get to that because I'm hoping to go inside right now and bring you all of this damn footage as well as neighbor Eric's 1986-028, right there, right there, neighbors. Uh, <laughs> powerful saw. That is the, yeah, John Doe, I dropped a tree under 20 years ago and ain't started her since. Uh, I will have a playlist for you coming that has, or it might already be there by the time you watch this, that has that saw and a lot of shorts uh, because neighbor Eric is busy and, and that was the best way I could bring him his updates and his footage. So I did shorts for him because that's what's convenient for him. Um, but the challenge with his clutch and a little bit of that story. And then the other one is, uh, wait, oh, that's right. Neighbor Kyle was here yesterday. So that hook down there that doesn't exist is empty. Okay. Because he brought his saw back on warranty, which was the chain, the Timber Bros original 025. And they changed to an MS250. Okay. And so neighbor Kyle got their saw, uh, and it came back on warranty and it's been bipolar like crazy. But fortunately, neighbor Kyle and I once again got to cut with it. And so unfortunately, I did not get a cut video, but we did drop a big old tree with it uh, and cut up a big old tree with it. And it seems to be running fine. And so the Chainsaw Redeemer honors his warranties. He gives free chit away. And he's just a guy that's sitting here in front of his damn camera in his tiny little shed with the bugs attacking him in the middle of the night at 1.30 in the morning that wants to believe that even though he's naive, that it's not actually naive to believe that if he goes back to the person he used to be that got taken advantage of and shit on, but knowing what he knows now to be more mindful and to make wise decisions, whether he wants to go ahead and let someone shit on him or not, uh, to try and love them. I believe that kindness will beget kindness. And if we all start just doing a little bit better, if each one of us gets a little bit better in our character, and the way we treat others in this world, it's got to explode into something fucking beautiful. And yeah, if you believe in the Bible, King Jesus says he's coming back to burn it all the fuck down. But is there any reason that in the meantime, if you believe in Jesus, we can't actually get real and accept that King Jesus said you won't find him in a fucking building? Yeah, I'm saying fuck a lot. Why? I don't know. Because I believe the king of the universe is in control of my life. If he's real, if it's Jesus, or you can say I'm vexed by a devil, but I'll tell you, even if I am, I still fucking believe it's only by the authority of King Jesus for his great purpose. So, so it is what it is. I'll keep saying fuck and I'll keep telling you that I got to believe that until that time, if you believe in him, until he comes back and burns this fucking earth down, that we can still make it better and that that will hasten his return. So that we can get off of this shitty, filthy fucking earth. That's nothing but us all running around crazy with our fucking heads chopped off. Busy. Impersonal with each other. Rude to each other. Cutting each other off in traffic. Uh, killing each other. Shooting the schools up. Fucking Joe Biden as a piece of shit president. Sorry, Joe Biden. Not sorry. I know King Jesus elected you, not us. But you're an asshole. You filthy, vile liberals. I'm so sorry if you're a fucking liberal out there. But you're wrong. I don't care what you believe. The fucking views that you guys have. California. Sorry if you live in California. Not sorry. But to make pronouns like he and him illegal. I am a fucking man. I don't give a shit what you identify as. I am biologically a man. And science says there's only male and female. I don't have a problem <laughs> if you want to be something else. I don't care. 
But my point is, neighbors. My point is, I'm a man. The world is shit. And if we be kind, and I don't mean acceptance in terms of just accept whatever the fuck people are doing. No, I mean accept one another in terms of love one another, even if we don't like one another. You might not like me, but if you believe in Jesus, you're going to love me through it or not, God damn it. He says you're supposed to. Read 1 Corinthians 13. The funny thing is, none of my fucking church neighbors want to love me through the shit I'm going through right now. So that's it. Until next time, neighbors, be a man of your word. Be a woman of your word. Just be fucking honest, raw, and real. If you don't like somebody, tell them I don't fucking like you. And here's why. But I want to love you. Tell me why you don't like me and how I can be better so you can love me better. That's it. Whether you believe in fucking Jesus or not. Okay? Be kind to one another. Everyone, everyone, everyone is facing a battle. And if you want to find King Jesus, well, fucking stay tuned. We're going to find him. Or we're going to find out he's not the king of the universe together on this channel. Through the chainsaws and whatever the fuck else I do. Okay? That's it, neighbors. I love all 8 billion of you. Even though I suck at it, I will work hard to continue to love all of you better. And bring kindness back to this shitty, filthy, vile, disgusting, fucking, wretched piece of shit world we live in. Okay, that's it, neighbors. God damn it. I gotta go edit footage for you.